this time of year, I'm sorry, this is definitely not. <laughs> um, I want to launch a little bit sideways from a sermon I gave a few weeks ago, so I'll quickly summarise it. Um, and I want to talk about judging. Um, and heavy topic, um, I will talk about New Year's resolution somewhere in it, I promise. <laughs> Um, the last time I preached, I was talking about people who were in intense situations and they made a vow or a, a curse or a declaration and they'd say things like, may God deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow that person is not dead and that kind of stuff. And I, I was saying how these people make a judgment of a situation and it locks them into future relationships. And we can look at someone and, and say, they're not reliable. I'm not going to work with them again. But God's working on me and God's working on them. And so next time we come into a, an interaction, we're both different people if God's working on us. So if we've said, I'm not going to work with them, we've locked ourselves out. And so I was just saying we need to be give each other room and scope for God to work and move in us and not lock each other out and down. Um, but that doesn't mean that we can just sit back and let anyone do anything they like and say anything they like and and um, just just love them and it'll all be sweet. Because we, we are actually, we are allowed to have an opinion, we're allowed to form an opinion, we're allowed to ask God for the rights and wrongs of something and weigh it up and say, Yes, this course of action that someone's doing is, is maybe right for them, but it's not for me. And so we get into this area of judging. And often I think we, we all remember the verses in Scripture that say, don't judge, don't judge. And we tend to say, oh, it's wrong to judge. But it's actually there's lots of verses that say it's right to judge as well. And there's a, there's a difference in Scripture that I'd, I'd like to just try and develop and bring out today. Um, now, just to put the record straight, I know less than hardly anything about Greek, um, but there's a clear pattern in the scriptures, and if, if you're inspired by what I say today, you can go and check it out for yourself. The pattern's there through the Old Testament and the New, but basically, I'm just looking at the New Testament today, and th there's a number of words that are used for judge, and they fall into two patterns. There's two, two words there, krites and krino, and... There's lots of verses about those that we'll have a look at some of them. And that means judging, and it means judging in the sense of a magistrate. So you're before me, you've been found guilty of, and this is your sentence. And that's the role of a magistrate. It's about, it's judging, but it's about punishment and sentencing. Then there's another sort of judging, anacrino and diacrino, and you can see they come from the same word, that crino. And that's talking about discerning, asking God for wisdom, sorting out the rights and wrongs and the pros and cons of somebody's action or opinion or view and saying, yes, this is right or wrong, but it's not passing judgment or punishment on them. And to give you an example, um, Mr. D, um, in his job as a teacher at the high school, he gets to do to be a judge in both of these roles because he, he runs the cross-country team. So he sees all these third formers come along and he could see, he could get them in at the start of the term and they could have a cross-country race. And he could go to the, the one who won and say, oh, really good race, well done, Joe. And he could then happen to talk to the, the person who came fourth. I picked fourth because in a race you can often remember first, second and third. You might remember last because something happened to them, but the first person you forget is the fourth person, isn't it? So he might talk to the fourth person and say, oh, well, you know, you, it was all right. You could have done better. But does Paul really know that the guy who got first is actually a really good athlete? He hadn't done any training. He just strolled in and ran around the course and won. And the guy who got fourth, his mother died six months ago. And she'd been ill for ages. And she used to take him along to, when he was five to athletics and constantly encouraged him. And she died six months ago, and he said she would love it if I made that cross-country team. So he trained and he put everything into it, and he got fourth. So Paul can, in his role as cross-country 
coach. He gets to judge, to discern who's the good and who's the bad. Does he know all those background things to, to make his judgment, his sentence, on who gets into the team or not? He could punish that guy who got fourth by saying, well, you're not good enough, son, away you go. But he doesn't know the background. So there's a difference between discerning, just judging and sentencing and discerning the background. And that's the sort of stuff I'd like to bring out today. That's just a, a silly little example about something physical. But how much more was, was psychological, emotional stuff when we're dealing with people and they say stuff and we go, whoa, where did that come from? It's come from somewhere and we need God's wisdom to find out. Could we put those verses up, please? I'm going to run through quite a few Bible verses. They're all up on here. Just to, And you can just pick A or B. Sentencing, punishing, or discerning, sorting out. Isn't it? Uh, I checked, they are on there. <laughs> I hate it when this happens. We'll, we'll see if Rex can save us. The first one is Acts 7.27. Um, so this is the New Test. Ah, wonderful. Thank you. Is that up the top? It looks complicated. That looks... Ah, uh, that's great. Thank you. Um, yeah, and, and Paul's referring back to an incident in the Old Testament, but the man... This is when Moses came upon the two Israelites fighting each other. But the man who was mistreating the other pushed Moses aside and said, Who made you ruler and judge over us? So, which judge is that? Crites, the first one, yep. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Crites, yep, is fairly obvious. And that's kind of the standard one that we all quote. Oh, don't judge each other. My brothers and sisters, uh, yeah, all the verses are there. James 2.4. My brothers and sisters, believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ, must not show favoritism suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes and a poor man in filthy old clothes also comes in if you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say here's a good seat for you but say to the poor man you stand there or sit on the floor by my feet have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts now this is actually a little bit you have you not discriminated among yourselves? When you look at the original, that word is anacrino. And become judges, that word is crino. So this is an example of the difference I'm talking about. Have you not sorted out among yourselves the rights and wrongs and passed judgment with evil thoughts? And, and it's giving you the example because you're judging people, you're looking at people's circumstances and you go, oh, that person looks worth sucking up to. So we'll give them the good seat up and we'll give them the, the first cup of tea and we'll, you know, we'll look after them so that they like us and they'll keep coming. So you've kind of, and you've judged the person who doesn't look worth sucking up to and so that we'll write them off. So yes, discriminating in the sense of discerning and sorting out, sussing out where people at is good, punishing them for it, that's beyond our brief, as we'll come to soon. Romans 2.1 You therefore have no excuse. You who pass judgment on someone else, for at whatever point you judge another, you are condemning yourself, because you who pass judgment do the same things. That's pretty obvious. That's the, the punishment one, crino. Um, can we flick it up, please? Except the one whose faith is weak, without quarrelling over disputable matters. One person's faith allows them to eat anything, but another whose faith is weak eats only vegetables. The one who eats everything must not treat with contempt the one who does not. And the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does, for God has accepted them. Who are you to judge someone else's servant? To their own master, servants stand or fall. And they will stand, for the Lord is able to make them stand." 
One person considers one day more sacred than another, another considers every day alike. Each of them should be fully convinced in their own mind. Whoever regards one day as special does so to the Lord. Whoever eats meat does so to the Lord, for they give thanks to God. Whoever abstains does so to the Lord and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives for ourselves alone, and none of us dies for ourselves alone. If we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For this very reason, Christ died and returned to life so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. You then, why do you judge your brother or sister, or why do you treat them with contempt? For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. It is written, as surely, and so it goes on. So, yeah, Christies, yes. But there's a lot of stuff in what our brothers do about eating meat or not. I mean, you have to convert that to your life situation here in New Zealand now. But, and we might go, no, I can't do that. That's, that's wrong for me. Doesn't mean it's wrong for you. And, and it might, often it comes down to style. I don't like the way they do this, but that's actually completely different from punishing someone for it. Um, if any of you, yeah, there we go. If any of you has a dispute with another, do you dare to take it before the ungodly for judgment instead of before the Lord's people, or do you not know that the Lord's people will judge the world? And if you are to judge the world, are you not competent to judge trivial cases? Do you not know that we will judge angels? How much more the things of this life? What about that judgment? Crites, yeah. Just come back down again. I think that's actually, people talk about end times, and there's other verses that say this, that one of the roles of us as God's people is going to be to judge in the sense of punishment. The Crites at the end, um, as part of God's kingdom on earth, one of our jobs, uh, we're not just going to be sitting in the clouds playing harps, one of the jobs is going to be judging. Um, it's kind of scary, but that's, I think that's what it's saying. It's talking about Crites, and it's saying not yet, it's saying later. Um, there's other verses that tie into that idea of doing it later. Uh, Colossians 2.16 Therefore do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink, or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration, or a Sabbath day. These are a shadow of the things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. And again, that's Crites. Um, can we go up again, please? 1 Corinthians... This is doing my eyes in. 1 Corinthians 2.15 the person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but the person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. The person with the Spirit makes judgments about all things, but such a person is not subject to merely human judgments. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? What's that one? The person with the Spirit makes judgments about all things. That's diacrino. So, again, everything in life, we've got the Spirit of God on us. We can ask him to give us the wisdom to make judgments, to make discerning choices about what's right and wrong for us. Two or three prophets should speak. This is talking about how you conduct yourself in a church service. Two or three prophets should speak and the others should weigh carefully what is said. And if a revelation comes to someone who is sitting down, the first speaker should stop. So that the others should weigh carefully what is said, that's judging. Diacrino. Sorting out. Yep. Discerning, yes. Could we go up again, please? Corinthians 4.4. 4. This then is how you ought to regard us. As servants of Christ and as those entrusted with the mysteries God has revealed. Now it is required that those who have given a been given a trust must prove faithful. I care very little if I am judged by you. Um, sorry, I haven't 
No. Um, I care very little if I am judged by you or by any human court. Indeed, I do not even judge myself. My conscience is clear, but that does not make me innocent. It is the Lord who judges me. Therefore, judge nothing before the appointed time. Wait till the Lord comes. He will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of the heart. At that time, each will receive their praise from God. So there's a, there's a, there's a mixture through there. And you can... Um, my conscience is... I'm just reading parts of it. My conscience is clear, but that does not make me innocent. It is the Lord who judges anacrinos me. Therefore, judge crino nothing before the appointed time. Wait till the Lord comes. So now we should be wise to discern everything. In the future, we'll have a role with the Lord in, in passing sentence and punishment. 1 Corinthians 6.2 Well, do you not know that the Lord's people will judge the world? That's crino. And if you are to judge crino the world, are you not competent to judge diacrino trivial cases? Is it possible that there is nobody among you wise enough to judge diacrino, a dispute between believers? So it's encouraging us to be wise, to ask the Lord for wisdom. 1 Corinthians 11.31 For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. Now that first, and drink judgment, that's crino, punishment for doing things wrongly, and that's the natural reward, you get sick and weak. Um, but if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. Nevertheless, when we are judged in this way by the Lord, we are being disciplined. Now, nevertheless, when we are judged, uh, when we are judged crino by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be condemned with the world. And th this is a bit like the New Year resolution, I think. Um, if, if God convicts you of something in June, do you wait till January to action it? What's the point in having God working on us, changing our hearts, bringing conviction, if we do nothing about it? So, I don't believe in New Year's resolutions. I think if God convicts you of something, do it now. Don't muck about and wait till the 1st of January. So what all these, these different types of judgment are saying are that we are to be wise to discern all things, the merits and the pros and the cons, and work it out whether it's right or wrong. Mostly for ourselves, not for other people. Um, that Romans 14.3 passage was talking about people being weak and eating meat or not eating meat. Um, we can put a whole lot of things in there. We can put in murder. Is murder right or wrong? Do we need to discern that? We do, we do and it's clearly wrong. And there's, there's Ten Commandments that say that's wrong. So just in case we get screwed up with our discernment, there's the law to remind us, hey, you're actually murderers. No matter how you try and pardon it or say be sorry for them, they were abused and grew up and abused others, it's still wrong. So what about drunkenness, alcohol, in the light of that Romans 14 passage? Drunkenness is wrong. Drinking alcohol may be fine for some people, may be completely wrong for others. So there's discernment, there's room for discernment there. I'm not talking about drunkenness, I'm talking about having a drink. What about um, rock music in church? Some, someone, someone could say, Dirk. <laughs> someone could say, I hate rock music, we should ban it. Now, I hate rock music. I don't actually, but if I said that, that's me exercising some diacrino. Then saying it should be banned, that's going beyond my brief in Scripture and exercising crino, passing punishment on it. So the first part is right. I hate rock music. The second part, it should be banned. Is we shouldn't do that. We shouldn't say that. What's the punishment? 
yeah. The f if you hate it, you may need to make some choices about where you go, or the worship team may make choices if enough people hate it, but that's it's not passing punishment or judgment on it. That's the difference. Um, imagine one of our working bees here, and Martin turns up in the morning, and he sits down out in the sun and goes to sleep. And someone watches him after a few hours of this and says, He's pretty useless. He needs a rocket up his derriere. The first bit, he's pretty useless. That's that's fair call. That that's <laughs> I hope you report this accurately, Penny. <laughs> because looking at him asleep, he's pretty useless as far as that working bee goes, because he's not doing anything. But the, the purpose of working bees is fellowship. Well he's not doing that either. So it's, it's accurate, it's fair enough to die a crino and say he's pretty useless. But exactly. But to say he needs a rocket up his backside, that's passing crino, judgment, punishment, and yes, exactly, he might have had a horrible night and been traumatised by some job and been absolutely exhausted. So we're not in the, we're not in the position without God's wisdom to make the right call on that one. Ex <laughs> Except, yeah, to say it's totally out of, char out of character, so let, let's give the guy some slack and find out why before we say he needs to kick up the backside. Um, we might say, I, I don't approve of so-and-so's behaviour. I'm not going to have anything to do with them. Now, you may be diacrinoing accurately and saying, I don't approve of their behaviour, doesn't line up with scripture. You then go on to say, I'm not going to have anything to do with them. Now, that second statement might be protection for you or your family. I mean, if, if you had someone who was like had a horrible history of being a sexual abuser, you might have nothing to do with them because you want to protect your kids. That's fine. But what if you're saying, I'm going to have nothing to do with them, and that's actually you're punishing them with that statement? Then it's, that's different, and it's going beyond what I think Scripture is saying we should do. I don't approve of their behaviour. That's fine. I'm going to have nothing to do with them. That's, if that's punishment, then I don't think that's the right approach. It doesn't line up with what I'm trying to, the idea I'm trying to develop here today. So what I think all this is saying is be wise, be discerning, sort out the pros and cons, the, right, the consequences, the rights and the wrongs, but don't go the next step and pass sentence and punish people. That's not our job. That's actually not our job. Our, and yeah, be wise, but don't punish. So that's what I'm trying to say today. And that pattern is there through the scriptures. If you want to go through and look at it yourself, you can do it knowing less than minimal Greek. Um, all you need is the, the right books and you can sort out that pattern, just like we did looking at those different verses. So let's pray. Father, thank you for giving us your Holy Spirit and part of that, of your Spirit's role is to make us wise. And Lord, we pray that as we walk through life and rub shoulders with each other, that we would be wise. We wouldn't get sucked in to um, things that are not good for us, that aren't going to make us grow closer to you, that we wouldn't be sucked into punishing people, because that's not our job. And Lord, give us hearts to love one another with wisdom. And Lord, if, if we see someone in trouble discerning what's going on and offering help that's different from punishing them lord i pray you'd show us those those lines and that if we cast ourselves in the role of punishing people then we're setting ourselves at, above your guidelines and doing your job or trying to give us hearts to love each other and, and be wise amen Thank you. So
yep, New Year's resolution. Don't wait till next year. Do it now.